You're watching Capital Connection from the Illinois State Capitol. Welcome back. We are now joined by the other candidate in the race for the Illinois 13th Congressional District, Regan Deering. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me and giving me an opportunity to speak to your viewers. We, oh, you're welcome. We are now a, uh, about a month, a little over a month after the primary, a very, very close race that you, uh, you won between you and uh, Jesse Rising. Uh, just coming out of the primary now, heading into the general election, what, did you, what were your thoughts about how that race went and what, uh, what are your uh, thoughts now moving forward? Well, it was a great primary race and I'm really proud of the Republican nominees um, that stuck to the issues and tried to indicate to voters why they were the best choice to be the representative for the 13th Congressional District. Um, coming out as the nominee, I have earned the full support and endorsement of my three fellow um, runners. So that has been really exciting as we all look towards November and making sure that we have an elective representative for the people. So shifting gears now towards the general election, we have a lot more voters to get in front of. Um, we're looking to run a consistently solid campaign, a serious campaign uh, as far as voter contact and talking to key stakeholders throughout the district, um, a variety of industries, and just making sure that we reach people uh, that might not be traditional voters or that are looking for a place to be included in the democratic process and uh, would like to elect me. So that is important when we're talking about this new 13th district that uh, the 13th before uh, when Rodney Davis chaired that district was always said to be drawn for a Democrat but Rodney Davis would always win it now we have even tighter boundaries around all of the cities it, it's always it seems to be even more drawn for a Democrat why is that uh, how do you combat that how do you combat the districting side of this and and try to get more voters out in that way well, surely that's a frustrating process for all parties, uh, knowing that we do have a very gerrymandered and a very specific district. Of course, it is um, leaning Democrat at this point. But I do think that most people in the 13th Congressional District, especially those that I've been talking to along the campaign trail, have a lot of those same common issues. You know, we're looking for growing economies. We're looking to feel safe in our neighborhoods. We want to be able to afford gas and groceries as hot topics right now. And so I think that my ability to go out and meet the people where they are and and um, just be a great listener and know that I will advocate for them uh, in Washington is our primary goal. How do you go about doing that, specifically in terms of you know, inflation, uh, all of these, all, the main issues you know, facing, the, facing the people at home right now? What's your plan if you were to get to Washington? For well, sure. American families are hurting on a lot of fronts right now, small businesses as well and various industries. So I think the primary goal in trying to provide some relief for our American families starts with uh, stopping the reckless spending that's happening in Washington right now. We came out of COVID, we had a lot of dollars put into the um, economy, and I think we're seeing some of that backfiring now with record high inflation and prices at the pump and prices at the grocery store. And so I think we have to start there. We need to talk about um, bringing American energy independence back. Uh, I'd like to see Congress be more forward thinking. You know, we seem very reactionary right now, although I will have to say I don't think this administration is really putting out a plan for relief. Um, you know, they're changing definitions and trying to do workarounds, and the American people, I think, can see through that. So as the next Congresswoman, I want to be able to focus on issues that they're prioritizing and looking at good policy um, and good legislation that is going to work for all of us. You, you said they're being reactionary right now. You want to be forward looking. What? How does that work? I mean, does that take more long-term planning? Because right now there's, there are some conversations about, we're in this right now, it could last a little bit longer, but we do need to, to build to, to lessen these effects of you know, gas prices or, or prices at the grocery store. Sure, I think we need to be um, kind of all in on providing immediate relief. Um, looking for ways that we can adjust policy, we can maybe make some temporary shifts, but we do need to think long term. You know, we have a lot of government overreach and a lot of government spending um, that seems to be uh, misaligned with what our American people want and what we want to see for a future America that's strong. So I do think we need to obviously come to the table and talk about ways that we can provide some immediate relief for our families, but we do need to think long term, make sure we're bringing together the right people to have those conversations and really challenge them to work for the American people every single day. Uh Gun control is a huge debate right now, especially uh, after earlier this month there was the mass shooting in Highland Park. I talked with you about gun control last time that you were on this show, but uh, did the you know the events in Highland Park and the way that uh, 
you know, the debate has really evolved over this past month. Has, what are your stances? Where are you at on, in terms of an assault rifle ban, for instance? Sure. So incidents like those in Highland Park are devastating to all of us. It feels very close to home here in Illinois. I know those families were just going out to have a great time at a parade and found themselves victims. And I think that the conversation needs to continue to be elevated. I applaud Congress for thinking about um, bipartisan solutions and talking about real issues and how we can prevent tragedies like this happening again. But the bottom line is victims aren't paying attention to gun control legislation. I mean, Highland Park is an example of where they did have an assault rifle ban in their, um, in their town, and it didn't matter. And so I think we need to start focusing on gun safety and education. We need to talk about mental health. We need to talk about school safety. You know, Evaldi was a, a definite tragedy as well, and all of us are hurting, and we do want to know how we can avoid, <clears throat> excuse me, avoid instances like this in the future, but it's gonna take a lot of hard work. So the more gun restrictions is not the way that you would go about that. You would go with the, the general, uh, what we've heard, hardening schools and, and like you said, more gun safety talks? Yeah, I think that we do have great gun legislation on the books and it doesn't feel fair to penalize you know, law-abiding gun owners uh, with further restrictions when they are in fact not those who are carrying out these terrible acts. The country is also obviously still dealing with the fallout of, of Roe v. Wade. You're running for a uh, district here in Illinois one of the only states in the Midwest now that still allows for or, uh, abortion access without restrictions. Mm -hmm. Going to the federal level, there's been talks of you know a future, uh, uh, abortion advocates are warning about the possibility of a national ban. I wonder where you stand on that. Is that uh, you know something that you feel like Congress should weigh in or is it with the Supreme Court where they say this is a state decision? Well, I absolutely agree with the Supreme Court returning the state decision um, on this issue. I think the overturning of the Dobbs decision um, was historic. Uh, as a supporter of life, I am glad to see that issue be returned to state legislation where voters, in fact, have the ability to elect officials to best represent them. Having said that, we are here in Illinois, and we have very radical legislation uh, leading to late-term abortion and fully funded taxpayer abortion. And I think that the majority of the country is not going to make that an issue at the ballot box this November, but I do respect the discussions that are being had and you know the ability to use my voice to continue to advocate to support life at the federal level. You mentioned at the top of this interview that you there were no issues in having the, the other Republicans that you ran against kind of uh, fall behind you, support you now heading into the general election. But we have seen some fractures start to grow in the Republican Party, both at the state and federal level when it comes to you know moderate Republicans, conservative Republicans, uh, Trump Republicans, and more traditional conserv conservative Republicans. Do you, where do you fall on that? Are you, would you call yourself more of a moderate? Would you say you're more conservative? Do you support the former president as he's, you know, continuing his political uh, ventures here and, and endorsing more candidates? Well, in my candidacy and focusing on getting elected in November for the people who are in Illinois 13th, I want them to know that I'm a candidate that's gonna listen. I think that this election is more about progress and policy and not necessarily personalities. I think that people are frustrated. You know, there is a lot of people that gain from dividing us. And I think we have a lot more in common as it comes to issues such as, you know, being able to have comfortable budgets, having job opportunities, a growing economy. Um, you know, we need to get crime down in our communities. We have people that are feeling the effects of a wide open border. So I want to be a candidate that this year people are looking to elect to be able to represent them, regardless of whether we agree 100% on issues. And it's not so much about personalities, but making progress for all voters in the 13th district. What are your thoughts on how the uh, January 6th committee commission hearings have been proceeding? Well, I haven't been paying much attention, quite honestly. Uh, this is a robust campaign trail that I'm on, and it isn't been um, something that has been top of mind for voters that I've been talking to in the 13th. Um, I respect Congress's decision to try and get to the bottom of what happened on January 6th. There is a lot of frustration and there's a lot of confusion, um, and I do think we need to get some answers to be able to you know, prioritize democracy and make voters feel engaged in the process. We want great voter turnout in November, you know, we want to make sure we have free and fair elections and that we count every legal vote. So I think that that's where fo what we're focusing on and sort of engaging voters for November. 
have you been speaking with any of the you know office current office holders, uh, other Republicans, uh, different congressional seats? I, I know uh, there. I, I know obviously we have Darren LaHood to the north. We had we have Rodney Davis for another few months here. Mary Miller, Adam Kinzinger. Have you been speaking with any of these Republicans uh, as you hit the campaign trail here? Well, I think that's important for me as a first-time candidate is to lean on those incumbents um, and talk a little bit about what they're hearing and what congressional issues are at the top of mind right now. I'm obviously not elected to Congress yet, but I do want to be able to learn about the process. My goal is to go to Washington and legislate for the people. Um, I think there has been tremendous frustration by voters. Congressional approval rating is probably the lowest it's ever been. And so as someone who has had work experience, you know, I'm a mom first and foremost, so my children are, are my priority in going to Congress and leaving a good America for them and creating a strong America but I think that families are looking for elected officials to represent them, to be great listeners, to um, reach across the aisle when necessary and bring about good policy and good funding. So obviously knowing I can rely on some of those incumbents um, is key to me in my election. You yourself don't have a uh, long history in politics running for this office. Uh, your competitor does. Uh, Nikki Bozinski, longtime uh, supporter of labor unions, member of labor unions, former uh, aide to President Biden and Governor Pritzker. I, how do you go about, you know, competing in, when you're at such drastically different uh, times in your political career? Well, you're absolutely right. I didn't go looking for a political career, but like many across central Illinois and across this country, we're frustrated. And there seems to be a great disconnect between people in Congress and people in the administration working for us. And I know that those same passions that I have and wanting to provide for my family, to support great economies in my community is what I'm going to take with me to Washington. Having had experience as an educator, as a small business owner, and someone who has advocate for low advocated for low-income families in my community, those are the issues that I'm going to be focused on when going and reaching out to voters and asking them what their priorities are and um, you know really instilling in them my desire to go and work for the people in Washington so um, I'm looking forward to having discussions about what makes us different what our priorities are and um, really letting the American people decide well, uh, Regan Deering thank you so much for joining us today thank you Cole it was a pleasure we'll be right back